Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we're going to step back from the battles and talk about something else, the American Civil War Military Organizational Format. It dawned on me that I am slapping out words like regiment, brigades, etc., and there are people who don't know what those mean and have no reference for it. So today we'll partially address it. Because the Confederate Army was basically made up of generals who were educated and served as U.S. officers, the organizations overall were fairly much the same, with small differences that future videos will capture. Also, let us establish the size of the units I'm referring to are at the start of the war, fully formed, supplied, and manned. Shortly after the war started, many units never regained full strength again, so much of the time the organization sizes we talk about here are the maximum and most optimistic versions, not necessarily the reality. The basic force organizations was comprised of companies, regiments, brigades, divisions, corps, and armies. We'll discuss them from smallest to largest. The company. The company was the most basic form of unit in the American Civil War for both sides. Each company was defined as 100 soldiers comprising of 97 enlisted men and three officers. Companies were designated by the regiment they were with and one of the letters A through K as a company identifier. That is, they used A through K but never the letter J as a company identifier. This is because the letter J and the letter I could be mixed up in designations so it was avoided to basically avoid confusion. The company commander was usually a captain, often with two lieutenants to act as the captain's assistants. The regiment. When asked what unit a soldier was with, most soldiers in a civil war would respond with their regiment's name. Regiment names were fairly straightforward. Usually the soldiers were raised on a state level and the number associated with that regiment would be the chronological formation of that regiment from that state. Such as the 6th Massachusetts Infantry, which would normally mean they were the 6th Infantry Regiment to be raised by Massachusetts. Unlike our modern military, most often a regiment was composed of men who likely knew each other and joined at the same time. This was especially true on the company level. This often led to individual regiments having colorful names, uniforms, customs, or symbols that were familiar to those soldiers on the local state level but had never been heard of by others. A regiment is composed of approximately 1,000 soldiers, U.S. Army doctrine defined it as 10 companies of 100 soldiers each, resulting in approximately 970 enlisted men and 30 officers in each regiment. The regiment was generally commanded by a colonel, with a lieutenant colonel and a major to act as their second and third in command. The Brigade A brigade is a combination of regiments, generally anywhere between two and six, but most commonly it was four regiments assigned together. This meant there was anywhere between 2,000 and 6,000 soldiers assigned to a brigade, with the most common number being 4,000. A brigadier general would command a brigade and report directly to the division commander. The naming convention for brigades was slightly different between the two sides. The Union identified brigades with numbers such as the 2nd Brigade, but Confederates changed this and brigades were normally named after either the current or former commanding officers, such as Hood's Brigade, named after General Hood. All sides had nicknames for brigades, generally identifying a brigade for something they did in battle or by their commander yet again such as the Iron Brigade or Stonewall Brigade. The Division The divisions for both sides had anywhere between three and five brigades assigned to it. A major general is who commanded, and it should be noted that for many of the Confederate forces, they actually assigned up to twice as many brigades to the division than the Union did. This means if the Union's division had four brigades, that it consisted roughly of 16,000 soldiers, while the Confederacy might have a division with up to eight brigades consisting of 32,000 soldiers. That is part of the reason why just hearing how many divisions each side had would not give the full story of how many soldiers were present, and it's why I tried to give numbers of soldiers, not just the units. The Corps. The Corps is the second largest designation and generally consists of two to four divisions, but generally is made up of three. That means it would be roughly an equivalent of 48,000 men for a Union Corps, but because the Confederates double their brigades in a division, they could be up to 96,000 soldiers or so. Once again, though, they almost never had full capacity after the start of the war. Lieutenant Generals command the Confederate Corps, while the Union had Major Generals commanding theirs. The Army. The largest concentration of units of soldiers is called an army. So when you hear me say things like General McClellan and his Army of the Potomac, for example, that is what I'm referring to. An army is made up of two or more corps, meaning it could be up to 180,000 or more Union soldiers, or far more Confederates represented in very significant portions either size used. Entire campaigns in the Civil War were based around the army level of command as army commanders generally were in charge of major operational planning and how to go about things. Well folks, that's it. Those are the general organizational sizes of both sides of land forces. We'll come back and talk later about their navies and specific types of units such as cavalry, artillery, engineers in future videos. 
This was just to give you an opportunity to understand the better size and scope of each battle. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.